Let's come in our Bibles to Proverbs chapter 27, please. Proverbs chapter 27. As your pastor has said, it's some time from he booked me for this meeting. There's been much water onto the bridge, uh, but it's good to be here. And it's good to know the help and the blessing of the Lord. And I believe the Lord is here. I believe through the ministry and song, we've felt the very presence of the Savior. And I do trust and pray that that will continue. Proverbs 27. Uh, just reading one verse, verse number one, please. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse number one. Well-known text of scripture. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let's just read it again. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And we trust that God will bless the reading of his own precious and fallible and errant and inspired words to our hearts this evening. There are many great texts of scripture that you could come to at harvest time. Perhaps the best known is Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 20. The harvest is past. The summer has ended. And we're not saved. I remember an old elder in Coke years ago, Jack Ashcraft, uh, preaching in that text. I was just a young lad and I remember he just quoted it over and over again. And he talked about the, the summer of opportunity. Summer is a time of opportunity. We know the summer is drawing to a close. And there's things you can do in summertime that you can't do in the wintertime. And he talked about the summertime of life. And sometimes it's so sad when someone slips into eternity. The harvest has passed. The summer of life has ended. And they're not saved. One of the most saddest things that can ever happen. For someone to close their eyes in death. And open them in a crisis eternity. Last week would have been our harvest uh, in Rough Island, uh, And I wanted to take a harvest text as well. And I, I took one from uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. And you can see the, the link with the sowing and the reaping. And how that would tie in with harvest and of course there's much we could say about that wonderful text of scripture we need to be aware uh, that we shouldn't be deceived there are days of deception the old devil is busy seeking to deceive seeking to blind the minds of them that believe not uh, and then of course there's an alarm God is not mocked the word mocked just simply means to turn your nose up at and, and people can turn their nose up at God but you know God is not mocked because there will come that time, and I say it reverently, when God will turn his nose up at you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And then there's the action, whatsoever a man soweth. When you're in the farming world, you know all about it. You want to make plans to plant the crop, and you'll prepare the ground. You'll put the seed in, and you'll, uh, you'll wait for uh, the crop to grow, and then you'll harvest it, and all the different things that have to take place. But, but before you do that, you think about it. But if you thought about planting the crops and never planted them, well, you're going to have a very barren, barren harvest. You could think about being saved. You could think about accepting Christ as your saviour. And yet never get to the point of actually doing it. I remember speaking to a man one day and I, I tried to speak to him about his soul. It was in East Belfast where I used to be a pastor quite a number of years ago. And he, he, he just said, someday. Someday. He sat down in the chair one Tuesday afternoon. He was watching a program on television. His wife thought he was sleeping, but he had slipped into eternity. And someday became no day. Intended to get saved, but never took that step. There has to be the action, whatsoever a man soweth. And of course then there's something we have to accept. That shall he also reap. I think all of us know if you, if you sow something, you'll reap it. If you plant barley, you'll want to reap barley. If you plant wheat, you'll want to reap wheat. If you plant potatoes, you'll not expect to, uh, to grow turnips. Uh, and so whatsoever a man soweth, it's, it's true in the natural world and it's true in the spiritual world. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So rejection of Christ and Christ will reject you. So an acceptance of Christ and you will be accepted in the beloved. 
Some great text of scripture that we can certainly preach the gospel on this evening. But my, my heart was drawn to Proverbs 27 verse 1. As I think of this season of the year, this set time. You know the Lord promised in Genesis chapter 8 I think it is that seed time and harvest will not cease. Uh, and you know in spite of the pandemic God keeps his promises. No pandemic can alter the promises of God. And here we are in this harvest celebration here this afternoon because God is a faithful God as we were reminded this morning. But when we look back over 2020, when we get even back to last year's harvest, I wonder how many plans that you had made individually. And they all were scrapped. I wonder how many plans even as a church you had made. And you look back and everything had to be shelved. And this text becomes very real, doesn't it? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. We were to have a tent mission in May 2020. The field was organized. The tent was organized. The evangelists were organized. The singers were organized. The testimonies were organized. Everything was set to go. The invitations had been printed. There had been much prayer that went up for this tent mission. But it never happened. And surely that was a lesson to us as a church. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And maybe you've had those experiences as well. We've had weddings that never took place. We've had events that had to be scrapped, had to be cancelled, had to be rearranged. And I'm sure that's been many people's experience tonight. This text has numerous illustrations Bring us up to this point this evening. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Isn't it a tax to saint and sinner alike? Doesn't it remind us of the sovereignty of God? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And as I think of this tax this evening, I want to challenge you by the help of the Spirit of God about your soul tonight. So much has been cancelled, as I have said. So many plans. Look at the sporting calendar. Look at all the fixtures that were so important and people looked forward to and had their tickets and all of a sudden they were shut. Look at the schools that were closed. Exams were cancelled. Event after event, practice after practice, all of these things were, were closed. And I think God is preaching this sermon to you tonight. He says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You know, there's sin in the text. Boast not. There's something soon in the text. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. There's a shortcoming in the text. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not. You know, there's a surprise in the text. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. But here's the thing that's in this text. Self is in this text. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. And I think God wants to speak to someone tonight. And God is a simple word tonight. I don't even have to preach this text this evening. Couldn't you understand it yourself? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You know, there's some things that believers can boast about this evening. The psalmist said in Psalm 44 verse 8, In God we boast all the day long, and praise thy name forever. Again, Psalm 34, verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Now, for Christians, we can't boast about tomorrow because we don't know what a day may bring forth. But we can boast about our Savior. We can boast about our God because he holds our tomorrows in his hands. And I know tonight, no matter what happens tomorrow, I can put my head in the pillow and if I could sing, I would sing it. It is well. It is well with my soul. Can you do that tonight? Have you got that hope? Have you got that assurance this evening? Paul says, God forbid that I should glory. Save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the whole world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Paul says, I can boast in the cross. If it wasn't for the cross, we would have nothing this evening. But thank God for the old rugged cross tonight. Let's break this text down simply this evening. I want to talk about the wisdom of the speaker. I don't know about you, but I've discovered there are so many medical experts in the world. 
I have discovered there are so many people with degrees in epidemiology. Everyone seems to know more about this virus than other people. And you have all the experts bombarding you with information after information. But here's something. You and I entered 2020. And remember last Christmas. Remember 2020. Remember the New Year's celebration. Did anyone tell you then that it would be against the law at a certain time in the year to go to Port Rush? And all the experts that seem to know so much now, six months ago, they hadn't a clue. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't understand the things that were going to take place. And God is saying to you tonight, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. But here is the speaker in Proverbs. Who was the speaker in Proverbs? Well, Proverbs 1 verse 1 tells us it's the Proverbs of Solomon. You know what we read in Scripture? We read in 1 Kings 3 verse 5. God asked Solomon a question. He says, what do you want me to give you? What do you want me to give you? Imagine the God of all the earth coming and asking you a question. Like, what do you want me to give you? You know, Solomon didn't ask for things that people would ask. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for riches. He, he didn't ask for his enemies to be defeated. He, he wanted understanding to discern judgment. And God says, because you have asked this thing, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. He went on to say that there was none like thee before, neither shall any arise like unto thee. And I believe Solomon, outside of Christ, was the wisest man that ever lived. So the wisest man that ever lived brings you this quotation this evening. Brings you this text tonight. Remember we said this morning, it was Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. It was Solomon who said, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Everything that this world has, it's, it's just empty. And surely we listen to the medical experts. We have to do that. We have to trust them. But here's the wisest man that ever lived. And he's got a word for you tonight. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Do you see the wisdom of the speaker tonight? And then you see the, the warning sounded out tonight. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. I think there's something prophetic here. You see, when you read the New Testament, when you read 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, Paul said this, Know also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters. And Paul says there'll be a lot of boasters about. You know, in Romans chapter 1, Spurgeon described it as the most horrible chapter in the Bible. And he wasn't attacking scripture. He said it just makes awful reading. Romans 1 verse 24. Wherefore God also give them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own heart to dishonor their own body between themselves. I'm not going to read that passage this evening. Some of you will know what's in it. Sin and sin and more sin. And the Paul went on to say, being filled with all unrighteousness. He said this in verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters. And Paul says there's going to be those who will take pride in their pride and will boast of their pride. Don't we have people who march because of their pride? This is what this book says. There's something prophetic about this book. But you know, there's something pathetic about this text as well. Boast not thyself. Don't we hate those who boast? Don't we not like being in their company? Those who, who are filled with themselves and have a, such a, a huge ego? James says in James 4 verse 13, Go to now, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there for a year and buy and sell and get gain. Here's someone who's made plans for tomorrow. And there's nothing wrong with planning for tomorrow, but he forgot about God. Whereas you know not what shall be in the morrow. For what is your life that is a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away? For you ought to say of the Lord, well, we shall live and do this and do that. And then James goes on to say this, but now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Are you boasting about tomorrow? Are you boasting in your own heart what you intend to do? Like the rich farmer, again, thinking of the harvest connection tonight. You remember, he had great plans. 
He had plans for his enrichment. Thou hast much goods laid up for many years. He had plans for his retirement. He's going to take his ease. He had plans for his enjoyment. He was going to eat. He was going to drink. And he was going to be merry. But he forgot about an appointment. And the Lord says, This night, thou fool. Thou fool, this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. He had boasted about tomorrow. He had boasted about what he was going to do. He forgot that it's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. Have you ever considered the possibility, while you're listening from home, while you're listening in the hall, in the building here this evening, that tomorrow may not be yours? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You see the wisdom of the speaker at Solomon. You see the warning sounded out. Don't be boasting about tomorrow. You see the when in the sentence. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. We're only talking about tomorrow. It, it's what, five hours away? That's all. It's not a, a long period of time. A, a famous uh, preacher once uh, preached about procrastination being the thief of time. Jonathan Edwards preached a message on this same text. Proverbs 27 verse 1. He said, Procrastination or the sin and folly of depending on future time. It is indeed foolish and sinful to depend upon something you do not have. And certainly none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. It is foolish to depend upon something that does not belong to you. Time is a gift from God. And sadly, most people abuse this gift. People say they'll get around to it by and by. Forgetting the street of by and by leads to the house of never. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Just tomorrow. That's all we're thinking about at the moment. The 5th of October. That's just that. Can't even boast about tomorrow. Don't talk about Christmas. I saw somewhere recently. The 25th of September. Three months to Christmas. And yes we want to plan for Christmas. We want to think about Christmas. But listen we can't even boast about tomorrow. Tomorrow may not be yours. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You, you know the little saying, when you tie your shoes in the morning, you have no idea who will untie them in the evening. Someone said, young people talk about what they're doing. Old people talk about what they have done. Fools talk about what they're going to do. Art thou waiting till the morrow? Thou mayst never see its light. Come at once, accept his mercy. He is waiting. Come tonight. I don't know about you, but you know, I have one of these iPhones and you have all the different appointments in it. I had Grange Baptist in it for today. and uh, But you know, there's so many appointments cancelled, but I never bothered deleting them. And you see them coming up uh, in 30 minutes time, you're supposed to be here. In 30 minutes time, you're supposed to be there. The traffic's light. The old iPhone didn't know there was no traffic at all for we're shut in. I'm sure you've had the same experience. We're only talking about tomorrow. That's all the writer is talking about. Are, are you planning to get saved tomorrow? Do you know the first person to use the word tomorrow in the word of God? It was Pharaoh. Let me give you a little bit of the background of Pharaoh. You'll find it in Exodus chapter 8. Remember the ten plagues that Moses brought, uh, that God brought upon Egypt through Moses. Well, one of them was the plague of frogs. I, I don't like frogs. I don't like anything creepy at all. I used to work not far from here in Castle Dawson. If there was a mouse in the office, I had to get out and the lady in the office had to deal with the mouse. I was scared of the mouse. Anything creepy or slimy, I'm not into it at all. I love fishing, but I don't like taking the fish off the hook. I need somebody else to do it. That's just me. I'm a wee bit squeamish. My wife would say you're a bit of a jenny, but that's another story. But, but you know, see when you tell stories, you got then you forget what you're talking about. Can you imagine frogs everywhere? These slimy, filthy, dirty frogs. In your house. In your cupboards. In your vehicles. Now I'm bringing it into the 21st century. You can imagine these frogs everywhere. And uh, Moses asked Pharaoh, when do you want me to take the frogs away? Do you know what Pharaoh said? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Wouldn't you think he'd have said, do it now. Do it now. If you understood what sin was, and understood that sin is an affront to a holy God. And that your sin and my sin sent Jesus Christ to Calvary. And he died a horrible death in order to be your savior. You would want your sin dealt with now, not tomorrow. 
Because sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Are you waiting till tomorrow? I'm going to get saved tomorrow. You know, we talk about yesterday's men. Uh, sometimes you hear political parties talk about yesterday's men and they try and get rid of all the older people. They think they need a, a new band of people. Let me tell you about some of tomorrow's men and tomorrow's women. You see, Felix was a tomorrow's man. He said, when I have a convenient season, I will call on thee. You know, we never read of Felix ever having a time that suited him to get saved. Are you waiting in the right time? You want a tomorrow's man? Tomorrow's woman? Do you remember Agrippa? Almost. Thou persuadest me to be a Christian. He, he was nearly there, but he never got there. He was one of tomorrow's men. Do you remember the ten virgins? Five were wise and five were foolish. Do you remember the five foolish virgins? They had no oil in their lamps. And when the Lord came back, it was too late. They were shot out. They were tomorrow's women. Are you waiting for tomorrow? Are you going to get saved tomorrow? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You see the wisdom of the speaker. Here's Solomon, a wise man. You see the warning sounded out. Boast not. You see the when in the sentence. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You see the wonder that is secret. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There are things you and I don't know. Let me tell you some things we do know. We know that God loves us tonight, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We know that Jesus Christ loved you so much. He left heaven's glory. He came to this scene of time. He went to Calvary's cross. And when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for you and he died for me. We know that tonight. We know that the precious blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us from all sin because the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. We know that Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again. He says, I'm alive and praise God alive forevermore. We know that in order to be saved, you have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Here's something you don't know. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You know that Jesus loved you. You know that he died. You know he rose again. You know he wants to be your savior. Here's something you don't know. You don't know what's going to be on tomorrow. We don't know about our faculties. I had an uncle not far from here just Five or six miles down the road was crossing the road one night in Castle Dawson. A car come up and hit him. It was a hit and run. He, he lay in a vegetative state for 30 years before he died. I remember speaking to him in what used to be called Thompson's House in Macrofell. I tried to speak to him about Christ. I might as well have been speaking to that wall. You don't know about your faculties tomorrow. You don't know about a tragedy tomorrow. We lost a, a young man in the assembly, 42 years of age, just one Sunday morning, took a heart attack and just slumped into eternity. Now he was, a, he was a great man of God, and boy, we miss him dearly. I never would have thought that Ian is somebody that, that was going to leave this scene of time. Never would have thought of it. Faculty, tragedy, finality. God says, my spirit shall not always strive with man. How long has been God been working with you? How many harvests? How many meetings? How many opportunities? Will God walk away sometime because you've walked away so often from him? There's the faculties, there's the tragedy, there's the finality. Then, of course, there's the great expectancy. Surely, as we look around us, Jesus must be coming soon. Surely the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. What if Christ were come back tonight? You wouldn't have tomorrow. We would be gone. You'd have missed your opportunity. You'd be lost and lost for all eternity. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, Job tells us. He says, my days 
are swifter than a post. That's a runner. This was the, the day of London Marathon. I don't know how they managed it with all the rules and regulations. I have little interest in cross-country running. I ran one time for the Church Lads Brigade. I came in 174th. So I knew that running wasn't my forte, and I gave up my running career very early. But this was a runner, someone very quick. And now you see them. No, you don't. Job says, that's what your life is like. That's what it's like. It's just a handbreadth, according to the psalmist. It's just a vapor, according to James. Life at best is very brief, like the falling off a leaf, like the binding of a sheaf. Be in time. You don't know about tomorrow. Let me finish off very quickly tonight. You know the wisdom of the speaker. You see the warning sounded out, the when in the sentence, the wonder that is secret. And then I just want to talk about what wise men will seek. A wise man won't talk about tomorrow. Here's what the Hebrew writer says today. If you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Because now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Do you know why? Because of the brevity of life. Because of the reality of eternity. Uh, there, was a, there was a farm went on fire just outside Kilkeel. And I think it was a couple of thousand pigs were burned to death. You know, it must have been an awful death for, for those little pigs. There were a number of sows and some pigs and just went up in smoke. And probably the fumes killed them before the flames ever got there. I hope so. I hope so. And I know the farmer was really heartbroken. Can you imagine being in a fire for all eternity? The Lord says the flames will never go out and the fire will never be quenched. Now that's what Jesus said. That's not me trying to be a scary preacher. I'm just telling you what the book says. You see, when you see the brevity of life and the reality of eternity, there's a necessity of salvation. We must be sealed, Peter tells us. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, because if you're not saved, you're lost. We have to be saved. There's the urgency of the choice. Why? Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Jonathan Edwards said this in one of his sermons. Sinner, remember, Thou art at this moment standing over the mouth of hell upon a single plank and that plank is rotten. Isn't that a wonderful picture? He then went on to say, Thou art hanging over the jaws of perdition by a solitary rope and lo, the strands of the rope are creaking, breaking now. And yet you're talking about tomorrow. If thou wert sick, would thou seek the doctor tomorrow? If the house was on fire, would you call the fire brigade tomorrow? If I were robbed in the street on the way home, would you shout, stop thief, tomorrow? Here's something more urgent. Here's something more critical. You could die in your sins and be lost in hell for all eternity and never see another harvest. And yet you're talking about tomorrow. Let me finish with these words. As I say, they don't even need a preacher. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for thy word this evening. And Heavenly Father, so often these great texts of Scripture have been used by the Spirit of God to bring a real conviction of sin, to bring a real urgency upon those who are without Christ. And Lord, we're looking to Thee this evening. Lord, we know it'll never be the eloquence of a preacher. It'll never be the enticing wisdom of man's, words of man's wisdom. But Lord, we're asking that the Spirit of God will take the Word of God. And bring this tax to bear in some heart this evening. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And Lord, there may be someone here and they intend to get saved tomorrow. But Lord, remind them in their heart tonight, tomorrow may never come. 
and that now is the accepted time. Lord, would you grant salvation blessing to come to someone this evening? Would you speak into some dear heart all the plans that have had to be cancelled, Lord, over this past six or seven months? Lord, they're crying out to us that we can't boast about tomorrow. Lord, when it comes to the matter of salvation, this trumps them all. It's the most important decision. Lord, bring the reality and the urgency home to someone this evening. And Lord, what joy it would bring to our hearts. And Lord, that even be joy in the midst of the angels in heaven. If even one sinner was to repent of their sin and trust Jesus Christ by faith, and be saved for all eternity. Then tomorrow. Becomes less important. Because they can say it as well. It is well with my soul. Bless thy work our hearts. Take us all home safely. For it's in our Saviour's precious name we pray. Amen. God bless. Thank you very much for your attention this evening. God bless.